Welcome to Measuring Carbon in Peat Soils. This video demonstrates how to take a core sample from a peatland and how to prepare a peat core for analysis in a lab. Note that this video does not cover the steps for lab analysis of peat core data. You can find out more information about lab analysis in the accompanying guide. Before we get into the fieldwork, let's review the terminology used and the measurements required to obtain carbon stock estimates from peat soils. The most common method for measuring the carbon stored by peat is by taking peat cores. Peat cores allow us to estimate the carbon content of the soil, in other words, the proportion of carbon in a sample and the bulk density or the total amount of soil. Before digging in, there are a few preparation steps you need to take. First, we recommend that teams have at least three members to ensure the process is efficient and safe. Next, plan for your lab analysis in advance to ensure the data collected meets the end goals of your project. Detailed information about processing samples for lab analysis for carbon measurement can be found in the supplemental guide. Reach out to the lab you'll be working with to see if they have any specific requirements. The first step of measuring carbon in peat soils is to think about your site selection and sampling logistics. Consider the following questions. Where is the study area located? How many sites are needed within the study area? How many samples should be collected at each site? How deep should the peat cores be? Once you've selected your site, you will need the following materials to obtain a peat core using the methods we describe in this video. It's important to have everything you need before beginning. A detailed equipment list can be found in the accompanying guide. Now we're ready to head into the field. Once you've arrived at your site, you will need to document the vegetation using a standardized photo series protocol. Start by documenting vegetation and canopy cover by taking two photos of the site, one pointing straight down and one pointing straight up. From the same spot, turn to each cardinal direction and take three photos, one parallel with the ground, one angled 45 degrees up, and one angled 45 degrees down. Once finished, you will have 14 photos of your site, three photos for each cardinal direction, one documenting vegetation, and one documenting canopy cover. Be sure to record the latitude, longitude, and elevation of your site with a GPS and write these measurements in your notebook. Regardless of the number of samples you're taking, we recommend a systematic approach to recording your core IDs. You can come up with your own, but we recommend using a method that identifies the location. In our example, we use PE to note PO on it, then the site, in this case it's our first site, 01, and then the sample. In our case, it's the second sample, B, from our first site, 01, in PO on it. Before coring, find a flat area close to the coring spot, lay down a tarp, and prepare all the required equipment. To assemble the corer, attach a minimum of one extension rod to the barrel, either by screwing it in or securing it with a pin. The number of extensions required depends on the depth of peat being sampled. The samples are taken sequentially in 50 centimeter increments, so the first would be to a depth of 50 centimeters, the second to 100 centimeters, and so on. This is done until you can no longer push the corer any further, which indicates you have reached the clay, rock, or any other object obstructing the core. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will only show coring with one extension rod being used. Lastly, attach the handle to the top of the corer. Note that P-core barrels have an open and a closed position. Check to see if the barrel has a serrated or sharpened edge. If the sharpened edge is on the inside edge of the guard, the corer is in the open position. If the serrated edge is in the middle of the guard, the peak corer is in the closed position. You can mark which position is closed to provide an easy visual cue. With the corer in the open position, align the corer with the selected coring spot. Using the handle, 
drive the core into the peat until the top of the barrel aligns with the top of the sample being collected. In very dense peat, two to three people may be needed, or a sledgehammer can be used. Do not push the core any deeper than the desired sample depth, or it will invalidate the core sample. To avoid going too deep, you can label the desired depth on the core itself with tape before inserting the core. Once the core is fully inserted, turn the handle 180 degrees so that the barrel carves through the peat, meeting the guard. It's now in the closed position. One person lifts lower on the extension rods as close to the ground as possible, ready to catch and clasp the barrel and the guard together as it comes out of the ground, while a second person lifts from the handle. When lifting the core out of the ground, try to keep it as straight as possible until the core is fully out of the ground. Once the core is extracted, you can now transport it to your processing area. The core is now ready to be revealed, measured, and photographed. Open the core and reveal the core sample. Measure the length of the core and make notes of any distinct changes in soil profile in your notebook. Examples can be found in the accompanying guide. Mark the site and core ID on the whiteboard and take photos of the core from above so that the entire core profile and the whiteboard is in frame. Once you have taken measurements, notes, and photos, you can package the core for further lab analysis. Decide ahead of time whether the core will be sectioned in the field or transported whole to a lab. If you are unsure or short on time, transport the entire peak core to the lab for sectioning and processing. Full peak core packaging requires the following equipment. The steps for packaging full peat cores are as follows. First, line the inside of the PVC pipe with aluminum foil and plastic wrap. Move the peat core into the PVC pipe. Be sure to label the top and bottom. Next, wrap the peat core in plastic and aluminum to ensure the core stays fresh. Further secure the core with poster board and tape. Finally, store the sample horizontally in a cooler. Another option is to section the peat core in the field. In-field core sectioning requires the following equipment. To section the cores in the field, start at the top of the peat core and cut sections one to five centimeters in length or wherever there is a noticeable change in soil type. With the knife remaining where it made the cut, use a trowel to transfer the sample to a pre-labeled resealable bag. Immediately transfer the resealable bag to a cooler. Wash and dry the knife and trowel. Repeat this process until the entire peak core is sectioned and packaged in the cooler. After everything has been packaged, clean the core and tools thoroughly. All samples, whether packaged whole or sectioned, should be transferred and stored in a freezer as soon as possible for lab analysis. With fieldwork complete, the peak cores are now ready for lab processing. In the lab, the samples will be weighed, dried, ground up and analyzed for physical, chemical and biological properties. A detailed procedure of the lab protocols can be found in the accompanying guide. This lab analysis will provide you with the bulk density and carbon content measurements essential for calculating the carbon stock of the peat core, which can then be used to estimate the amount of carbon that is stored in the peat of your study area. Congratulations! You now know how to take a peat core to measure carbon in peat soils. In this video, you reviewed the steps for selecting a study area, site, and plots, preparing your plot for coring, using a core to take a peat core, and sectioning, processing, and packaging your peat core samples for lab analysis. For more information, please consult the guidelines for measuring carbon in peat soils and refer back to this video anytime. Happy coring!